Hey guys, Back Photography here, and today we're going to do a little bit of a different video. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can take better portraits, and in particular, better wedding portraits, using your camera and implementing some skills and having a little bit more of a think about how you're going to set up your portraits to make them as good as possible. So today we're going to be looking at this photo in particular and we're just going to go through all of the things I did to set up this photo. We're going to look at some editing techniques that you can use as well. We're also going to look at how we set up our bride here, the way that she's posing, where she is in her scene, um, the time of the day that we took the photo, all those things, the setting in the camera, what camera I used, what lens I used and a few other things as well. So this video is going to be a little bit more long-winded than usual because I'm going to go really into depth and talk about how I set up this photo and not just speed through the editing and then show you the final result. Okay, so first things first, if you want to up your game with your portrait photography, you just have to think a little bit more about how you're going to take a photo and not rush in straight away and just start shooting. Because if you put a little bit extra thought into how you're going to stage your scene, how you're going to pose your model, just little bits of thought can really make a massive difference in the final product. Okay, so let's have a look at a few things that I did before I even took any photos that made this image look better than it could have done. Well, first thing we did is we chose the camera and we chose the lens that I used for this portrait with a few things in mind. First of all, this is obviously a portrait, so we wanted to use a portrait lens for this photo. Now, there are a few different lenses that are really good for portraits. Personally, I prefer primes because it means you can get a really nice depth of field and it also means that primes in general are more sharp than zoom lenses. So if you're wanting to shoot portraits, it would be my preference to use something between 50mm and 200mm because if you shoot really wide for portraits, you get a lot of distortion, uh, facial features start looking strange, and you're not really isolating your subject as well as if you're shooting a telephoto lens or a standard zoom, lens, a standardized focal length lens. So for this particular photo, we shot at 50mm, and the reason we shot at 50mm is because that's a nice standard focal length, you can see a lot of the background, you can get a nice idea of the scene in the image, but it also gives you enough compression to have a flattering image of the person that you're taking a photo of, which is in this case the bride of this image. Okay, so that's the first thing, shooting at a 50mm, and also we shot at a low aperture, in this case f2, and that is so that we got a nice separation from the background, which you can see is nice and blurry, and then the subject here, which is nice and sharp. So that's the first thing you want to think about. And the second thing that I would like to bring up with this photo is that we made sure that the background was actually quite far away from the subject. And what that meant is we got a really nice separation between her and the background. Because when you're shooting, particularly at a low aperture, but at any aperture, the further away the background is from your subject and the closer your subject is to the camera, the more blurry it's, um, the background is going to be compared to your subject. So if we shot the bride here and these trees in the background were much closer, they wouldn't be anywhere near as blurry as if they are really far away. And similarly, if the bride is really close to the lens, it's going to make the background a lot more blurry in comparison than if she was closer to the background and there was more distance between the lens and her. So that's another thing to think about. And with these sorts of photos, with bridal portraits, my personal style is to make a nice dreamy, airy sort of image with golden light, that sort of thing. So having a nice blurry background shooting at a low aperture and getting a lot of separation between the bride and the background really makes a big difference. So the next thing you want to think about when taking portraits is what time of day is best to shoot. Now for portraits like this where you're looking for a gold, warm, dreamy looking image, shooting either really, really early, about half an hour before, uh, half an hour after the sun has risen, or uh, about one and a half to one hours before the sun sets is the perfect time because the sun will be the lowest that it can be in the sky and because of the way that the atmosphere refracts light you get a beautiful golden warm light coming in around your scene but not only that because the sun is so low you don't get super harsh highlights and shadows from the sun being super high in the sky so that is the best time in my opinion to take really nice warm soft light portraits but if you're going for something that is a little bit more harsh, a little sharper, maybe a little bit more dynamic, maybe you're doing something like fashion portraits, something like that, you might want to shoot in high noon so that you can get really 
deep shadows and really harsh highlights. That's just another style that you can do um, incorporating a different type of lighting depending on the situation. So once you've got that sorted, next thing you want to think about is how you're going to set up yourself to take the photo of your model, of your bride, whoever you're taking the photo of. So one thing to think about is I'm actually really tall. I'm about six foot two, six foot three, and my bride here is about 5'3", five, 5'4", five, so I had to really squat down when I was taking this photo so I could get an image where she is sort of level to my camera. And the reason that I've shot slightly lower than I could have done being quite a tall guy is that it really accentuates her height and makes her look more slender than if I shot from high looking downward. Another thing that you can see in this scene is that I've made sure that I've shot very level um, so that she's not on a weird angle and everything is nice and flat. Because when you take a photo, it's very important that you have your angles really nice and straight and clean, and that really does make the image look more aesthetically pleasing to the viewer. Okay, so after you've done all that, you're starting to get a nice image. The next thing you want to think about is how you're going to pose your model or your bride or whoever you're taking the photo of. So, the pose we've done here is very deliberate, and I'm going to explain what we've done here uh, to get the bride looking as good as possible. So the first thing that you'll notice is that we've got the bride's bouquet here over on the side. And the reason we've done that is to hide this side of her body. Um, it's a little bit of a trick really, so her body looks more slender than it is in real life. And this is a great technique. You can use this on any body shape, not just on skinny brides, not just on uh, larger brides or anything like that. This will work on anybody. So that's the first thing, using these flowers strategically to make her body look more slender. And obviously she's already nice and slim, she doesn't need to look any slen more slender, but I found that this is a really great way of making someone look as good as possible. So the next thing that we've done here um, to really make her look as good as possible is we've made her tilt her head slightly on an angle so that we can get this nice jawline here. And that just makes her facial features look more angular and look more slender, which is aesthetically pleasing. Now, if we had her face straight on, you wouldn't be able to see her jawline here. Her nose would look more round and flat. You wouldn't be able to see her cheekbones as nicely. And also her hair wouldn't look as good because it wouldn't fall off her face in such a nice way. So having her head tilted slightly to the side, but still looking towards me, really makes her facial features look a lot more dynamic, a lot more angular and a lot more beautiful. So the next thing we've done here is we've made her drop her shoulder a little bit just to make her neck look a little bit more slender and her shoulders look a little bit more slender as well. And if you look around here, you can see that her legs and her hips are facing sort of diagonally towards this way, but then we've made her sort of twist her body around, her upper body around a little bit more just so we can get a little bit more curvature here in her waist and in her hip, and that's just to make her look a little bit more curvy and a little bit more slender. And again, that makes her look more aesthetically pleasing to the viewer. So that's what we did with posing. And just, you know, little subtle pose changes like that really make a massive difference to your photo. So now that we've talked a little bit about posing, let's talk a bit more about framing of the photo to make it look as good as possible. So I've got a few more photos up here that I've just added and I would like to talk a little bit about them. So here is a very classic framing where you've got most of her body, um, but you're just chopping off the legs a little bit above the knee. Now this is a very uh, standard classic sort of portrait. You see this a lot in weddings. You see it a lot in the standard studio portraiture and that sort of thing. It's a very tried and true way of taking photos. So the next one we've got, which is also a portrait, is slightly different. It's a more of a full body shot. And as I was saying before about depth of field, now that we're a bit further away from her, um, the background really is nowhere near as blurry as uh, in this photo here. And I also think that the background in this image is much more flattering because the gravel here is not quite as nice looking as the dirt in the back of this image here. So in my opinion, these are both nice photos, both framed very well, and I would definitely deliver both of these to the client. So this next one, I wouldn't deliver to my client. And there's a few reasons for that. First of all, like I was talking about the posing before, this pose here is still lovely. She still looks absolutely great, but I definitely think that the side pose here is a much more flattering pose uh, than the front pose here. And just because it makes her body look more, um, more aesthetically pleasing, um, 
nice and curvy, nice and slim, that sort of thing. Whereas this one here, because she's straight on, and the flowers also do look like they're in um, a bit of the way of her as well, I really just don't think this photo is quite as nice. And also, if you look at the framing of this image, you can see that her dress here is being cut off um, in the corner, and I think it's very important if you can, especially for full body photos, to really get the, the entire dress into the photo nice and fluffed out. So that's why I think this photo is a much better photo than this one, and just keeping an eye on the framing of an image and the posing of an image can really make a huge difference in how the final product turns out. So here again is another way that you can frame your image. You can see it's a little bit tighter than this one here. It's a different photo completely actually. Um, and you can see this nice framing again, you can see her hands here, you can see her arm, everything's sort of cut off in a nice way, so nothing's left out, but the things that are left out are completely left out and you're not wanting to see any more of that particular part of the image. So that is a nice cut as well, a nice tight frame. The next photo here is, um, in my opinion, a less good frame, because you can see in the bottom here her hands are slightly cut off, and that is a big no-no um, in portrait photography, in my opinion. So, good one again, you can see her hands here, let me just zoom in a little bit, her hands here are in the frame, whereas in this one here, her hands are not in the frame, and I would say that this one is a poorer crop. So, just having a little bit of thought about how you're going to crop your image, how you're going to frame your image to be um, inclusive of all the things that are important and exclusive of the things that don't matter really makes a massive difference to the final product. And also don't be scared to shoot a little bit further away because you can always crop in and it's much more difficult to expand an image when there is nothing um, outside of the frame that you've captured. So now that we've talked about framing, we've talked about posing, we've also talked about the time that you want to shoot and also the environment that you want to shoot in, the next thing we're going to talk about is the camera, the camera lens and the settings that I used for this photo. Now, I've already told you that I used a 50mm for this particular photo. Let's go into a little bit more depth about the camera equipment and settings. I used a Canon 5D Mark IV, which is a full frame DSLR camera. Now, you don't have to use a camera that's that good to take photos like this, but it is nice, especially because I'm a wedding photographer primarily, um, to have such a nice camera that's nice and robust, has two card slots so that I have the redundancy in case one of my card breaks during the wedding. It's nice and rugged, you know, I'm not too worried about it getting wet and that sort of thing, although I wouldn't go swimming with it. Um, it's just a nice camera. You could do a photo like this though with an entry-level Canon camera. Anything really that you can get a nice low aperture prime lens on the front of. So the lens I used again was a 50mm. It was a Sigma 50mm 1.4 and I shot at an aperture of f2, a shutter speed of 1 1 640th of a second, let me just check that actually, just to make sure. Yes, so f2, 1 640th of a second shutter speed, and an ISO of 100. So I shot at an aperture of f2 because that meant that I could get her eyes nice and oh, nice and sharp, but then her hair and her um, face in general was still sharp enough that it wasn't completely disappearing into the background because this lens is able to shoot at an aperture of 1.4 which is a much blurrier and brighter um, aperture and that would really make my background completely melt away into the background but because she was quite close to me and I wanted to keep most of her facial features sharp shooting at f2 in my opinion was better than shooting at 1.4 and also you've got to consider as well that with weddings in particular but really with any photo shoot I'm um, shooting at such a low aperture when you are rushed for time um, when for example this photo shoot we only really had 15 or 20 minutes to get um, some bridal portraits before we had to head off to the reception it's much better to shoot a slightly higher aperture um, just so you don't miss quite as many shots because when I shoot at 1.4 or even 1.6, 1.8 I do actually miss quite a few shots and you'll see that the eyes, not in this photo but if I was shooting 1.4 I would get blurry eyes just maybe slightly and miss focus hit the nose maybe and a lot more photos would get thrown in the bin. So I prefer to shoot a little bit higher, but you really can't tell much difference between 1.4 and f2 anyway and that means that I can get much more photos that I can deliver to my client. That's why I shot at f2. I shot at a shutter speed of 1 640th of a second because it was still nice and bright outside and I wanted to get really nice, clean, crisp images um, of my subject. And if you're shooting on a 50mm, for example, with a subject um, that isn't just a stationary object like a person, 
I find that I like to shoot at about 1 60th or higher, just so I don't get any motion blur from me moving around with my hands or from the model moving. And because it was a slightly windy day as well, if I shot at a shutter speed of let's say less than 1 200th of a second, you would get some motion blur in her hair because of the wind. So that's why I shot at 1 640th of a second. Sometimes you might not be able to shoot that high just because there might not be enough light around to get a nice exposure without bumping your ISO higher. But for this situation, I was able to shoot quite a high shutter speed because of the light available. So I shot at an ISO of 100 because that is, I believe, the native ISO of my Canon camera, but I might be wrong about that. It might be 200, but I think it's 100. Either way, the difference between ISO 100 and 200 are quite negligible, particularly when you're shooting in such nice conditions like outside on a warm, soft, sunny day. So shooting at an ISO as low as you possibly can means that your signal doesn't have as much voltage running through it as it could do, which means that you are going to get less noise to the signal when it is capturing light. And the less noise you get because of the lower voltages going through your sensor, the cleaner and crisper the image is going to be and the less noisy it's going to be. So that's why you need to shoot at the lowest ISO possible. But because we're shooting in the daytime and there aren't that many harsh highlights or dark shadows, you really could boost the ISO much higher if you needed to because you really only see that graininess in the deep shadows um, and also you see a loss of image quality in highlights when you shoot at a higher ISO. Because the higher you shoot your ISO, the less range you have to play with in Photoshop when you're messing with the exposure um, and that means that you don't have as much flexibility in post-production. So now that we've talked about the equipment as well, let's jump into the editing process and look at how I edited this image as this is a final image and we're gonna go back now to the straight out of camera photo and go through the steps of editing the photo. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just open it up in Photoshop. Now you could do pretty much all of the same editing in Lightroom if you're using that, or I'm sure you could use any other editing software really, but I'm gonna use Photoshop for this particular tutorial. So because we were shooting at golden hour and we were shooting in the shade, what you'll often find is your color balance is a little bit crazy. And you can see here that it is way too blue and that if we wanna get warm golden images like this, so we're gonna to have to change the color balance to be more yellow. So one thing that is really important and will really up your game when doing portrait photography is getting your monitor calibrated to reflect true color. And this can be done uh, within Windows if you're using Windows. I believe Mac um, doesn't have a calibration software, but I'm not sure about that. I'm sure you can get one through Google, but making a adjustment to your monitor to have true color is gonna make an absolutely huge difference to the quality of your images, because if you're looking at your photo on a monitor with bad color, and then you open the same image on your phone, it's just gonna look absolutely wrong in terms of colors. So I've got my monitor nice and calibrated so I can start messing with the color balance and not have to worry about it looking completely crazy and terrible on mobile phones or other people's monitors. So first thing I'm gonna do with this image is I'm gonna correct all of this blue color in the image. Now, if you just saw this photo and didn't see um, this photo here, you'd probably actually think that this looked okay and wouldn't realize that you have such a blue tone. So what I like to do sometimes is just go over to some other photos that I've done in the past that I really like the colors and just sort of compare them and see if the photo you're working on looks like it's right or looks like it might have some weird color imbalances. Now, this is particularly true if you're using auto white balance on your camera, it's going to um, vary the white balance you have in your images quite a lot. And I always use auto white balance, especially when I'm shooting weddings because I don't really have time to mess with that um, white balance setting. But that's fine because I'm shooting in RAW and you can always change it post-production. So I'm just going to slide this over now until I get a nice color. Obviously you don't want to go too far. And as you can see, you do have a lot of flexibility here. So I'm going to go to about there I think is about right. And if we look at her tones, they look, ni Oops, they look nice and warm and good. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. The second thing I'm gonna do, and I always do this with my images, well not always, but I normally do this with my portraits, is I just add a little bit of clarity, say about 12 points. And this really just adds a little bit of contrast into the mid-tones here and here and that sort of thing. And just makes my model here, my bride, I really pop from the back of the image. So because I want this photo to be really beautifully gold and warm, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my 
adjustments here for color and I'm really just going to boost up the yellows a little bit in the background there. And then I'm also going to brighten them up a little bit as well and then change the hue just to be a little bit more on the orangey side to get that really nice golden color. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm just going to boost the shadows up so that we have a more airy look. Now, if I boost that too high, you start to see some weirdness going on in her eyes. She starts losing contrast in her hair, um, in her eyelashes and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to go that high, but I'm not gonna leave it down here because that is looking quite dark and moody. I'm just gonna boost up to about here and then I'm gonna drop the blacks, which are the really dark shadows, back in just so we can get some nice um, deep shadows back into her eyes and into her hair here and here. So that looks quite good. Now I might go back into here again, and this is a trick that's, in my opinion, a little bit overdone in the wedding scene at the moment, but it's really popular and brides really like this kind of look. So we're gonna drop the greens a little bit here. Not, not too much, just um, about 20 points. And then we're also going to um, just increase the luminance a little bit as well just to make the image look a little bit more light and a little bit more airy. It doesn't make a huge difference, um, but it does just little subtle differences here and there add up and make a beautiful image. Okay, so I'm going really into depth with this photo and I wouldn't normally do this to all of my wedding photos or all of my portraits, but if you see any photos in your, in your um, wedding package or in your portrait package that you're making, a few standout photos that you just add a little bit of extra time to um, it can really make a big difference to the final product. And because this is one of the most important photos in a wedding uh, package, maybe not quite as important as the first kiss or any of the couple photos, but still important to have a nice image of the bride, I'm just gonna get um, a little bit of extra time and take a little bit of extra care in making this photo really nice. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna drop the clarity 30 points, I'm gonna drop the black shadows and exposure. And what I'm actually doing here is using those drops there as a masking tool. So as you can see now, wherever I click, um, it completely blackens out that area. Now for Camera Raw, which is the plugin I'm using, which comes with Photoshop, um, there is a masking tool already in the program. And some one of my commenters, one of my subscribers showed me that once. Um, thank you for that, by the way, but I don't remember um, how to use it. So I'm just gonna do it this way because, well, basically it does the same thing. So now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go over all of her skin that I would like to smooth out a little bit. Just making sure not to go over any of her um, important features like this line here where her cheek is um, on her nose or anything like that. We wanna keep all those lines nice and sharp. But I'm just gonna um, mask all of the parts of her face that I want to make a little bit more smooth. So under the eyes is a really good spot and also the neck as well. Just making sure not to um, get rid of any features you wanna keep in. And then we'll do her arm as well. And we'll do on her armpit as well. And basically we're just gonna smooth off the skin, make it look a little bit more pleasing, a little bit more smooth, but we don't wanna go too far with this because if you smooth someone's skin too much, um, it becomes very obvious and they look a little bit like a porcelain doll and that's not what we want to do. Um, for these photos. We want to make it look as seamless as possible and we also want to make it look like we've never actually changed um, the photo at all and it just looks like it should have come like that from the camera. So really less is more with this sort of stuff. Okay so that's her arm, now just a bit on her armpit as well. And all of these edits and these sorts of things is something that I tend to do for every bride, um, not something that I do for someone that I think looks you know, worse than anyone else. It's not, it's not anything to do with that. It's all about making your bride look as good as possible uh, for her wedding photos. And also I make sure to ask if they want this sort of treatment as well. Obviously I'm not going to <laughs> change any features uh, without permission because that would be quite rude. So there we go. As you can see, it's just looking a little bit more smooth now. Uh, you can still see the texture in the skin, but it just sort of softens it all out and makes it look a little bit more pleasing. Okay, so one final thing we're gonna do in camera roll before we jump into Photoshop is we're just gonna brighten up the eyes slightly, just a very little bit. Um, you don't wanna give your subject laser beam eyes or anything like that, but just adding a little bit more clarity and a little bit more exposure, just brightening them up a little bit, really makes a viewer draw um, to those eyes when they're looking at this photo. Okay, so I think that is everything for Camera Raw. Now let's open this up in Photoshop. And you can see that every time I edit a photo, it does look slightly different. Uh, but I think that this one in particular is a little bit better um, than this one here. 
Okay, so what's next? Well, I can notice here that there's just a little bit of a bump here in her arm, and I think that's probably because of the way I posed her. So I'm just going to uh, flatten that out a little bit, not to try to make her look skinnier or anything like that, just to sort of smooth out her arm um, and make that look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So just adding, you know, little little touches like this really does make a huge difference um, in the final product. And really, when it comes to portraits, the way to take better portraits is just to take a little bit more time and a little bit more care in setting them up, and then a little bit more time and care in editing them as well. So you can see there, I've not really made it much smaller, but it really does make a difference having it nice and smooth there. Okay, so what else can we do to this photo to make it look better? Well, there's one thing that's glaring out at me at the moment, and that is just this little bit of redness here on the bride's arm. So it was about 35 degrees Celsius uh, during this wedding day, so it's really, really hot wedding day, and uh, we'd been outside all day, so she's just showing a little bit of sunburn on her arm there, which is understandable. So we're just gonna get rid of that uh, using the hue and saturation adjustment, just to smooth out the entire skin area, make it all look about the same color. So what I'm doing here is I'm just boosting the saturation all the way up to 100 so I can see what colors we actually have to work with here. So you can see that her arm is generally speaking orange and then we have a little bit of redness and pinkness in little spots here and there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just drop that back, go into my red channel in particular, which basically just gets all the colors from here uh, to here and isolates them. And I'm just gonna boost that up again so I can see all the different colors and then slowly move this slider back so that I can get rid of all those oranges that we wanna keep and just isolate the red bits that we don't want to keep. So I reckon about here is good. So I'll drop that back down to where it was and then we just mess with the slider until we get a nice smooth and even skin tone. So I reckon about minus five and then we'll also just change the color here to about there I think. Let's have another, have another go. about there. Okay, so if I press OK and then we see before and after, it's a really subtle change, um, but it does make a difference. Just again, little little subtle changes really do add up with these sorts of photos. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to remove any little blemish um, that we can see on her arm. We're not going to remove any freckles. You can see this one here, this is a scab, so we're just going to remove that one. Don't want to remove any of her features. Uh, this one looks a little bit swollen as well, so I reckon that might be a pimple. And what I'm doing here is I'm just circling an area that I don't like, and then I press the delete button. And because this layer here is locked, um, we can do a content aware deletion, and it will just get rid of any blemishes um, in that particular area. So that's what we were doing there. Okay, so now let's have a final look on the image, and I'm pretty happy with this. Another thing that we might just get rid of is this little white mark here. I'm not really sure what that is. I don't think um, it's a mark that she was born with or anything like that, although I could be wrong, but I'm just going to get rid of it because I think it might have just been a mark where she was leaning her arm or something like that. Okay, and then one final thing. This is a warm, happy, um, hot, beautiful time in her life and a beautiful day. So we want to make it look as dreamy and warm and happy as possible. So one extra thing we can do is jump back into the camera raw filter and just add a little bit more light above her head um, where the sun would be beaming all of its light onto our model here, onto our subject. So I'm going to get the brush tool here. I'm going to make it a little larger. I'm going to add almost a full stop of brightness and then I'm going to change the temperature to a nice yellow tone and I'm just going to add some light in here. So I think that might have been a little bit too much so I'm just going to drop that down a little bit like this, maybe reduce that a little bit and as you can see here just brightens up that top bit there and makes the whole image look more warm and happy. So I think we'll leave it there. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, I really, really appreciate it. I'm also going to leave in the description all of the camera equipment that I used for this photo shoot and a few other bits and pieces that I like to use on my photo shoots. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content, I really appreciate you sticking around. And also hit that bell icon as well so that you can get notified when I make any more videos. I'm going to be making a lot more content like this and other content in the future. And 
If you're looking at buying any camera equipment or anything like that, I've got some links in the description and if you buy anything through there, that really helps me out a lot and helps me um, support myself while I make these videos. So I really appreciate any support like that as well. So once again, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.